My name is Ryan Tamori. Welcome back to another episode of the Pit Press Podcast. As always, I'm joined by the voice of Western New Mexico, live from Silver City, well, recorded from Silver City. Um, and a Lobo fan since 1970, Mr. Ed Nunez, how are you? Good, Ryan. Uh, another great guest. Looking forward to uh, talking to him. Uh, we're very happy to have this guy on, and I think this gets the mojo going or momentum towards basketball season. Um, our next guest transferred to UNM in May of 2023 after spending the last two seasons from one of my favorite mid-major teams to watch, Texas A&M Corpus Christi Islanders. Hey, I love it. Uh, I have no ties to Corpus Christi. I just loved watching you guys. Um, he helped those Islanders win a pair of Southland Conference titles and made two NCAA tournament appearances in 2022-23, was first team all Southland selection, the conference men's basketball student athlete of the year. Last year, he scored in double figures 23 times, including 11 20-point games. He had 15 points and 12 rebounds against Southeast Missouri. For those of you who don't, college, who don't follow the small guys in college basketball, that's SEMO. In the NCAA first four in Dayton, and then in the first – and that was Texas A&M Corpus Christi's first ever win in the NCAA tournament. Uh, he had 16 points and 15 rebounds against top-seeded Alabama – he gave them all they could handle with the Islanders. His name is Isaac Mushila. Thank you for joining us here on the Pit Press Podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, man. Appreciate you for having me in the podcast today. We appreciate it. Uh, I'm an only child. What in the hell is it like to have seven siblings? I mean, uh, it's pretty good to have like a, I mean, personally for me, being a big family, it's pretty good because like you do have a lot of siblings around you. So like when we're in the house, just talking, having fun, it's, Especially late at night, it's pretty fun. Like, I don't know how it's like being like a small family, but like, I can say it's pretty fun being a big family. Uh, it gets pretty lonely as times, at, yeah. at least when I was growing up. Anyway, anyway, that's not here nor there. Let's talk some basketball. Uh, practices started for college basketball programs around the country. How is it going for you, and how is it going for the rest of the UNM men's basketball team just early on? Um, we just trying to like build that chemistry, you know, like with the new guys and uh, people who are here already. So like, we just want to build back chemistry and uh, get ready for the season. And it's been going pretty good so far. You went head to head against Brandon Miller in the NCAA tournament. This is just a personal question, but what kind of pro do you think he can be? <laughs> I mean, I believe anybody can be good. Like this guy, as long as you put it working, you're going to be good. I believe in that. Gotcha. What is it like to play in the NCAA tournament? Is it anything you've experienced in your college basketball career? Uh, I would say March Madness is kind of like different, you know, like you never play in the national TV. I mean, you never been like around that many people, fans in the crowd. So like when you go out there, you just want to do your best. Like the feelings and all that's pretty good, but like I always trying to stay focused. You were the Southland Men's Basketball Student Athlete of the Year. What does that honor mean to you? And is it those? In, and how important is it to do, those around you, especially from an educational standpoint? Uh, it's pretty big, especially like I, for me. I was put school first. So I was give everything in school. I was want to get good grades. So like having that reward is pretty much like motivated me to like always like you know have good grades and. For the people around me, they were just pretty happy for me because they always pushed me to like have those grades. You know, uh, Isaac, you averaged 14.5 points per game last season and 9.9 .9 rebounds. The previous year, you averaged 13.2 rebounds and 13.2 uh, points and 9.4 rebounds. 
uh, identical consistent statistics on, in both years. What makes you, this is a question, uh, what makes you the rebounder you are? I just think my quickness and my strength. Um, I just trying to be on a rise by every position. You know, I mean, cannot teach out the rebound the ball. I have to rebound the ball. You just like gotta be in the right spot and use your quick your quickness and strength to rebound it. You know, I've been around the game a long time. Rebounding sometimes comes down to determination. Uh anticipate, they always say this too, right? Anticipate every shot is missed. No matter who's shooting it, could be mash, could be house, shots missed, you're gonna be right there on the boards. Um, is there a rebounder? I looked at some, you know, I, I remember Dennis Rodman, of course, of the past, quick jumper, uh, pogo stick, right? Is there a rebounder that you look at and you model? Yeah, Cause I'll tell you what, Isaac, that's some work under the glass, man. You know, and, you, and you're listed at six, five. So, uh, is there a rebounder that you look at and, you know, you model and you say, Hey, I admire that you've got your own rebounding game. And that, again, those kind of rebounds there, they're important, man. Those late uh, rebounds in the game when we need a, a board, need a rebound. Is there a rebounder you look at and model your game after? Uh, like you just said, it did in Chicago. Like, I mean, I watched some of those highlights. I was like, yeah, I can't definitely rebound the ball like that. Especially when people looking at me saying, like, it's 6'5", like, you cannot go with the glass like that. But for me, it was just like, as long as I felt like I'm strong enough to go in the right spot, I can box at anybody. It don't matter if it's six. 10, seven footer or whatever it is, to me it already don't matter. I can box at anybody. Boxing out's one thing, right? Because you know yeah. I, I've seen that. I've, I've seen it. You know I've seen that. But there's got to be you know again anticipation, heart, determination, knowing where the ball is going to come off. All those things matter as far as a rebounder. And looking at your stats, I'll tell you something, man. I'm, I'm really impressed. You shot 83.5 percent uh, from the free throw line. Played in 70 games for Texas A&M Corpus Christi over two seasons. You're named SLC Player of the Week several times. Uh, 16 points, 15 rebounds against Alabama in the NCAA tournament. Uh, how can that experience propel UNM maybe to a Sweet 16 appearance or further? And I, I want to say this, that Coach Patino, and remember, uh, Ryan did say I've been a Lobo fan since 1970. It's a long time. Coach Patino had mentioned that this is one of the best Lobo recruiting classes of all time. So how can that experience propel maybe New Mexico into places we never seen the Lobos at? We all want to see it. But how can that experience help New Mexico and, and uh, maybe propel them into a Sweet 16 or further? I'm just here to win games. Like uh, like you said, like, I really want to go like make a deep run in March Madness. But first of all, I start with the conference. Like, I want to win the conference first then make, it that, make that deep run uh, in much minus. I'm just here to win games. I'm not, I really don't be like, like I'm just trying to go step by step, you know, like start the conference and like off the conference, then make that deep run uh, in the NCAA tournament. Like I'm, I'll be ready for whatever it is, whatever the coach put me at, I'll be there. Like I'll be ready to go. And I tell you what's up, I think um, your, 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 your presence and experience in the, uh, in, you know, in, on the court and the rebounding that you do is going to be such so key, uh, you know, for New Mexico. No question about it. You know, Isaac, uh, Lobos lost some key players: uh, uh, Mo, Daisy, Josiah, Alec, and right now, um, Nelly Jr., Joseph, Visa, uh, not, not, not. Uh, he's not able to practice right now. He's not with the Lobos, and uh, so. But basically, Coach Patino seems to think that addition uh, by subtraction. In other words, the players that were lost, the players that, uh, including yourself, that uh, came in as transfers, it seems to think the team is improved. Now it's early, but seeing the practice, seeing what you've seen so far, what's your outlook of the team? Um, I think right now we're looking good. Uh, with Nelly, I hope he gets here soon because we need everybody to like to be ready for the season. And uh, yeah, I mean, I believe it's going to be a pretty good season. It's just like, we've got to keep working and put ourselves on top of the, the map. You know about work, baby. Judging by your stats, you know <laughs> you're, you're a blue collar guy. I can tell already. You know uh, you haven't played a game in the legendary pit. Have you heard any stories about how loud that place can get? Because it can get very loud. What have you What have you heard about the legendary pit? I mean, I heard a lot about it. Um, it's it just most of like a lot of people just saying going to be like fifteen thousand people in it. So I'm looking forward to that because like with the fan pushing us, kind of like. Put us in the spot like where we want to win more games when the fan is behind us, you know. Like we just, I'm just looking forward to that and uh, be ready for the season. 
have you ever played in i mean other maybe than an ncaa tournament but in the southland conference yeah you haven't played really maybe a non-conference have you played in an arena of that caliber on um, non-conference games yeah because last year we played uh arizona that gym was packed uh we played like like uh my first year and then we played uh uh, Minnesota, that was packed too. Like we play another game. I kind of have like I'm kind of used like not because in Southland we don't have that many people in the gym, but like we have some pretty like games that like the gym was packed. What was it about New Mexico that made you want to come here and play? Um, I just believe in Coach Pete. Uh, goals for the team. Um. When I was in transfer portal, he talked to me. He said, like, he believed with uh, additional me in the team, we got a good chance to make a deep run NCAA doubles. I mean, NCAA tournament. So, like, I was like, okay, I look up the team, look at how smash. And all the guys in the team, I pretty much believe him. I was like, yeah, but me, it is a good chance to uh, make the deep run. Have you ever played with maybe guards of MASH and House's capable? I'm not, you know, I'm not you know, putting a kibosh on guys you've played with in the past, but the talent level that House and MASH have, have you seen guys like that? Have you ever played with guys like that at the collegiate level? Uh, I would say last year, my guard, Terion, it was really good. Like, he could pass the ball, he could do everything on the ball. But he wasn't as fast as uh, House, but, like, I believe Terion was a good guard. But I'm just looking forward to play with these guys, you know. What's been uh, your impression of Albuquerque so far, the city, the town? Uh, the university what's been your impression so far i think people down here love sport they always support they're always behind the teams and uh, i'm looking forward to that when we like our season start and i'm loving it so far i ain't gonna lie <laughs> i'll tell you what uh you know like i said as someone has seen it for years wait his weight yeah you just wait you're gonna you're gonna uh you're gonna really uh you're gonna love i think uh playing for the University of New Mexico. I got to ask you this too. You know, we mentioned you scored 13 and then 14 points. You get a lot of rebounds. What can we expect to see from you on the offensive end? You get a lot of putbacks, I'm sure. And the big thing, Isaac, 83.5% from the free throw line, man. That's huge. That's huge. Because they, they can't they can't foul you. They don't want to foul you. And you're creating a lot of fouls by your presence inside. So that's huge. What can we expect to see from you offensively besides, you know, follows and putbacks? What's your offensive game like? I mean, lately, I really have been working on my game, like shooting a little bit mid range, shooting threes. I've been in the gym pretty much every day. I'm, like, I'm just putting the work in. I'm trying to, like, because, like, I, last year, like, on AM, I had a different role than I, I, like, I do have right now. So, like, I just pretty much been working on my game to shoot more threes and uh, shoot a little bit mid range. So, like, this coming up season, I'm looking forward to, like, shoot a little more threes than I did last year. Has the uh, coming from sea level to this altitude has that affected you yet? No, <laughs> nothing, nothing really. Like I mean, it's just basketball. I mean, if you can play hard, man, I don't see the difference. It's just I mean, I believe people in uh, Mountain West pretty much more talented than Southland, but like to me, it really don't mean anything. I'm just gonna come out there and play. It's all basketball. I think that. I ask that question a lot. I think it's kind of a stupid question, but I ask it to everybody. It's been, I, 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 I lived in New Jersey. I've been at sea level a lot. So that's why I ask that. And when I come back and go back and forth, I can feel it. Ed, do you have anything else? Just one more question. You know, yeah. we were in practice early in uh, June when you came down. Uh, Sebastian Forsling lost a lot of weight from last year. You know, he's a big guy, seven foot. Yeah. I saw you riding him out, man. I saw that right away. And he's strong. But that, you know, that's not that a knock on him. That's not a knock on him. That that tells me how strong I know. I know the game. I've been around the game. That tells me how strong that you are. What's he looked like in practice? Because he did work during the off season to lose weight. He, he you know, it, you know, you always say this. It doesn't do any good to be big unless you play big. How has he looked so far in practice? I mean, he's looking good. I mean, uh, he's been moving pretty much like pretty good lately, and uh, I believe he's been putting the work in too. So, like, I believe personally, uh, he's going to be ready for the season because. The way you're looking in practice right now, I can tell like he's good. He is a transfer forward from Texas A&M Corpus Christi. He's joining the Lobos this year. His name is Isaac Mushila. We appreciate your time today. We look forward to talking to the season. And good luck. Thank you again. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And good luck, man. Looking forward to watching you work Thank in the uh, post. Looking forward to it.
Appreciate it.